Welcome to the Titus Timeout Podcast. I'm Ken Loudermilk, and this episode will be focused on rules of thumb for selecting and sizing thermal displacement diffusers. Thermal displacement diffusers are typically located in a low side wall or floor location. They discharge cool air at very low velocities and rely on negative buoyancy of the discharge airstream to cause it to drop to the floor and move away from the outlet in a manner similar to a liquid spill. A return or exhaust air outlet is located several feet above the occupied level of the space. The cool conditioned air remains trapped at the bottom of the room by warmer room air above it and cannot migrate to the overhead return. When convective heat sources, for example, students in a classroom, are introduced to the space, they give off heat to the environment around them. In the absence of turbulent forces in the space, this heat forms convective heat plumes that rise along the body of the heat source and continue to grow and rise to an elevation where they either contact the ceiling or encounter equally warm air. As Mother Nature hates a vacuum, air from the supply air reservoir at the floor is drawn up to replace the rising heat plumes. This cool conditioned air not only conditions the students, but also serves as their source for inhalation. When they exhale, that air is warmer than the ambient temperature around them and gets caught up with the rising heat plumes, removing their respiratory contaminants with them. As such, the transmission of respiratory contaminants throughout the occupied space is minimized. There are certain rules of thumb for the design of displacement systems. First of all, the displacement diffusers should be selected for an average face velocity between 40 and 70 feet per minute. Since the air is discharged directly into the occupied level of the space, a supply air temperature between 60 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit is generally recommended. However, lower supply air temperatures may be employed when the displacement application involves transient occupants. Return air inlets must be located well above the breathing level of the occupants and should also be amply sized. A face velocity of 200 feet per minute or less is recommended to allow the contaminated air easy passage into the return air plenum. The temperature gradient between the head and foot level of the occupant should be no greater than 5.4 degrees Fahrenheit for seated persons or 7.8 degrees Fahrenheit for standing people. This limitation determines the supply airflow requirement of the displacement diffuser. Finally, as a rule of thumb, displacement diffusers should be located such that they are assigned coverage areas that do not exceed a radius of 30 to 35 feet from the outlet's discharge. The most critical performance parameter of a displacement diffuser is the size of its adjacent zone. The adjacent zone is the area around the diffuser discharge where velocities exceeding 50 feet per minute at the ankle level may be found. It is not generally recommended that stationary occupants be located within that zone. There are methods to minimize the adjacent zone, limiting diffuser heights to 5 feet or less is one way to reduce the adjacent zone. Using displacement diffusers with integral air pattern controllers is also an effective way to minimize the adjacent zone. Thanks for tuning in to today's Titus Timeout podcast. For more information on displacement ventilation, check out our other podcast on the subject or download our displacement ventilation engineering guide from the Titus website. And don't forget to subscribe while you're there.